gas stations running. Thank you to all the essential workers for all that you do. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For all you do. And with every challenge, question, concern, we'll be here for you every day. Every day. Every day. Because we will get through this together. Rick Bartolini of Rick Bartolini Presents, producing shows for Mariah Carey, Lionel Richie, Earth, Wind & Fire, and Bill Maher is offering his chic penthouse for sale at the Elite Symphony. This mid-conditioned condo features breathtaking ocean vistas from every room. The spacious kitchen and baths are brimming with stylish features. Luxury upgrades and built-ins abound. Bartolini will include two front row tickets to every RBP event in Honolulu over the next five years. Douglas Shanefield and Adrian Yee have all the details. Right now, while you're home, applying for college could be a smart choice. To help pay for it, there's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. Regardless of family income, you should fill out the FAFSA. Last year, millions of dollars in financial aid went unclaimed in Hawaii. Email fafsa at hawaii.edu for help. A local specialist will respond within 24 hours. In these unprecedented times, college can open doors to new opportunities, and we're here to help. Just because the fun outside is put on hold doesn't mean you have to stop the party. Dave & Buster's is open for to-go orders. With daily deals and $1 beer specials, pickup orders are 20% off and receive a $20 power card for your next visit when we reopen our games. Order online with the promo code MAHALO for a 20% discount on all to-go orders. Then pick up at our Aahi location at the door or with curbside pickup. Dave & Buster's, bring the party home. Paul Drews, weeknights on KITV4 Island News. Start your day with KITV4's Maleko McDonald, weekdays on Good Morning Hawaii. Accurate weather forecasts with meteorologist Pete Caggiano, KITV4 Island News. Now, from KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. On Good Morning Hawaii, the nation is now partially reopened as more states begin easing restrictions. Plus, Maui County looks to reopen retail with some changes on the way as customers shop. And with Hawaii continuing its low number of cases, some wonder whether it's time to say aloha to tourists again. The safety measures top state officials want to see before that happens. All right, well, good morning and happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the sure. moms out there. Uh, Thank you for all the great work you do out there. It should be Mother's Day every day, but this is our special day just for us. So. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, first, our uh, top stories of the day, though. Three new cases reported on uh, COVID-19. That brings our state's total to 631 this morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm Tom George. Aloha. I'm Annalisa Burgos. Thanks for joining us today. Maui and Oahu each have one new case, and the third involves a Big Island resident diagnosed out of state. Another case was recategorized from Oahu to the Big Island. 551 people are out of isolation while 17 people have died. Hawaii County reports just two active cases and Kauai County has none. And here's a look at where those reported cases fall. This is all based on the person's home address. You can see those maps right there. Most of Oahu is affected right now uh, with some hot spots in the urban core. Uh, Maui, uh, you can see every zip code has some cases, but the cases there center around Kahului. And you see the Big Island most concentrated uh, near Kailua, Kona. Of course, there was that cluster of those cases at the McDonald's in Kona. That's what you're seeing there. And meanwhile, Kauai, not that many cases, but they are focused on the eastern end of the Garden Isle. These maps uh, together using data from the Hawaii Department of Health there. And today, nearly all 50 states are partially reopened as parks, restaurants, and other businesses operating once again. Natasha Chen spoke to some business owners who are cautiously optimistic about the process. By the end of the weekend, all but three states Thank you. Thank you. will have eased quarantine restrictions in some way, even in once hard-hit Rhode Island, where the governor said Friday her state will be the first in the Northeast to lift a stay-at-home order. If you look at the facts on the ground, the data on the ground, we're doing better. 
And uh, so therefore, we're in a better position so we can start to lift our restrictions a little bit sooner. Restrictions are lifting from coast to coast. In North Carolina, retail stores have reopened, but at 50% capacity. In Delaware, stores can now offer curbside pickup. That goes for California as well, where stores can also now deliver just in time to send flowers for Mother's Day. For me as a small shop, uh, I'm not going to let anybody in, but I, at least I can operate, cannot just open everything because we will have a second wave and then we will go back to square one. San Francisco has decided to keep businesses closed until May 18th, but the rest of the state has some businesses reopening with modifications. I stay out of the politics of, I'm just, I, I need to open, you know, we're, we're ready. This is what we have right now for takeout. Nevada and Alaska have now joined more than a dozen states to resume dine-in service in restaurants with restrictions. People can also now get a drink at a bar in Alaska at 25% capacity. In Arizona, people can get their hair cut by appointment only. Same for Texas, with owners eager to open their doors. Everything is ready, and my clients are more than ready. <laughs> everything. I lost everything. Destroyed my business, closed my business. That's what it has done. In Iowa, people can go back to the dentist, go to campgrounds, the drive-in movies, and tanning facilities following special guidelines. Tennessee now joins Georgia in allowing people to go to bowling alleys. Pennsylvania is taking a county-by-county -county approach to reopening. Welcome news for this chocolatier in the town of Williamsport. We're hoping that the, the people, especially those who are, let's say, under age 60, come out more. Uh, because, again, they, you need to just get out, I think. Well, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has created a 17-page draft recommendation on how to reopen the economy. But the Trump administration says the plan isn't ready. Starting tomorrow, Maui County Mayor Michael Victorino plans to op reopen retail. He says owners told him they appreciate the extra time to work on plans to protect both their employees and their customers. Now, this includes requiring social distancing, a mask, and limiting the amount of shoppers who can go inside. They're prepared, you know, but again, we got to make sure everybody does it the right way. So we're hoping that we're going to go on the honor system the first day or two and have people then go out and check and to see if it's being done right. And hopefully we won't have many problems. Now, Mayor Victorino says if all goes well, he might uh, consider opening businesses like hair salons and barbers within the next week or two. I know a lot of people have been waiting on that haircut. <laughs> yeah, me included. 812 people, meantime, have arrived in Hawaii on Friday. That's up 126 from the week before, according to the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Now, out of those, there were 260 visitors and 267 residents. The rest are crew members, intended residents, or passengers headed to another location. At this time last year, about 30,000 passengers arrived in the islands each day. Time now, 6.05 a.m. Some want the tourism industry to resume, while others worry a massive influx will cause a spike in infections. KITV4's TJ Horgan explains why our lieutenant governor is calling for everyone flying in to be tested for COVID-19. It looks to me like this is going to be the standard internationally. This past week, on average, 760 people flew into Hawaii per day. Many of them right here to the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport. Almost, if not all of them, quarantined for 14 days. But Lieutenant Governor Josh Green believes there's a better way to ensure people flying into Hawaii are not bringing in COVID-19. But the best way to, to assure ourselves that everybody is safe and healthy is to know that there's a very low likelihood that they have COVID-19 as an asymptomatic traveler. Green told KITV4 he'd like every visitor to take a COVID-19 test within three days of their flight to Hawaii. If they tested negative, they could bypass the 14-day quarantine. If they tested positive, they wouldn't fly. And if they chose not to take a test, they'd be subject to the current two-week lockdown. A simple, straightforward test will serve to uh, kind of keep the, um, the gates only partially opened, but also at the same time, make sure that the travelers who come here come here with aloha. Green said he's in the early stages of exploring this plan's viability for Hawaii. Department of Health Director Bruce Anderson has some apprehension about the idea. Where people can carry the virus and be infectious, but cannot be detected with the current testing technology. 
and that's that's concerning. Green said the return of tourism is inevitable, but he believes this strategy is the safest way to resurrect Hawaii's most lucrative industry when the time comes. They have to be responsible and come here in a way unlike ever before, which is that they can reassure us that they are also healthy and not bringing uh, disease to the to the islands. TJ Horgan, KITV4 Island News. Well, soon Hawaii could have a fleet of contact tracers investigating the close contacts of anybody diagnosed with COVID-19. Bruce Anderson, director of the Hawaii Department of Health, told KITV it's working with UH to organize a two to three day training course for people interested in helping out. But when we start to see that disease activity start to build again as we reopen and potentially see that second wave starting, we can quickly, we can quickly grab these people and then expand our capacity even further. And a state epidemiologist, Dr. Sarah Park, you just heard from her there. She says they're still working out the details, but they want to train up to 500 people. And, you know, they say the contact tracing, that's really key. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the state leaders say right now we don't have enough of them. So yeah. I mean, that training could be huge. Yeah. All right. Time now, 6.08 a.m. It's a story that got a lot of you talking this week. A mom who lost her job during the pand pandemic and the first in line to wait five hours for food to feed her family of 12. Yeah, well, as soon as that story aired, a lot of you called us to want to step up to help. And Eddie Out has the heartwarming update on what happened next. A great story there. Time now, 6.08. Don't go away. Those stories and more after the break. Good morning. Hawaii. We'll be right back. Aloha, it's the Woody Show. Hello. While social distancing is necessary, we still have essential businesses here in Hawaii that can help us. Visit support808.com to find the latest on local businesses in Hawaii that are open and even hiring. Shop local, support local, I heart local. Duracell Optimum will be right where you need them. Today, tomorrow, the day after that, and the day after that day after day. Packaging designed to make storage easier. Duracell Optimum. Tanioka Seafoods and Catering would like to extend our deepest appreciation to our frontline heroes. Thank you so much for all you do to help so many. Tanioka Seafoods and Catering celebrating 40 years in Hawaii. Serving you quality foods with a friendly smile daily from 9 to 2. May God bless you and your families. is cool. That's your new split AC. Yep, got them at Costco. So what? You had to buy like 12. No, not Costco. Costco. It's a Daikin air conditioner. Daikin? Japanese radish? No, Japanese air conditioner. Costco and Daikin. Bruh, you should get one too. Your house is hotter than the pig in the emu. Cool your home with the super energy efficient Daikin air conditioner. Learn more at CostcoHawaii.com and tell your contractor you want a Daikin. retirement plan with Boya gives us confidence. We can spend a bit now knowing we're prepared for the future. Surprise! Surprise! We renovated the guest room so you can live with us. I'm good at my condo. Well planned, well invested, well protected. Boya, be confident to and through retirement. Aloha. We are the Woody Show from Star 1019. Hello. Hey. And we don't need to pander to get people to listen to our show. Nope. Never. Won't do it. Mahalo. The Woody Show, weekdays from 5 to 10 a.m. on Star 1019, Hawaii's alternative. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 6.11 a.m. Events across three islands aim to make Mother's Day weekend special, even if it has to be celebrated at home. Yeah, we'll show you how people decided to give back to families and honor moms for their special day. <laughs> With Mother's Day this weekend, Grand Wailea helped its 800 team members show their appreciation for their moms. It's part of the hotel's Share and Care initiative to support Maui families. We celebrate Mother's Day with groceries that they can bring home and prepare treats and sweets for their loved ones. Two Maui churches helped give out over 14,000 meals in recent weeks. Citizen Church and Honolulu United Methodist Church partnered with Virginia-based nonprofit Mercy Chefs to serve restaurant-quality meals to the newly unemployed, seniors, and others who need help. People could drive through to get the food, but volunteers also drove through neighborhoods and delivered grocery boxes. Can we get another person over here? Many on Oahu's leeward side got help in the form of food, resources, and services on Saturday. 
It's a child and family service event with First Hawaiian Bank, the festival of hope for families, also honored mothers. And the Salvation Army Hawaiian and Pacific Islands coordinated four special Mother's Day weekend emergency drive through food distributions on Oahu, Maui, and Hawaii Island. It gave about 1,200 families food for meals, fresh produce, and more. Diana Ko, KITV4 Island News. And two events gave away masks to Oahu residents. Everyone Hawaii says it's important for people to have personal protective equipment before Oahu opens for business on Friday. One event was with Eva Beach Surf Club in Eva Beach. The other was with Rotary International District 5000 in Wahiwa. All right, well, time now is 6.13, and this is something that got a lot of people talking. On Wednesday, we told you about a woman who showed up five hours early to a food distribution event, all to make sure she could feed her family of 12. KITV4's Eddie Dowd shares how the community stepped up to show her some aloha. We first met Herminia Ermatan at the crack of dawn, waiting to line up for a food distribution. It's so hard, you know, to wait a six hour in the car. After being furloughed from her job as a housekeeper for 37 years at the Hilton Hawaiian Village in Waikiki and still waiting on unemployment, she found herself in a food line for the first time in her life. We need it to do this for, for the kids and my, grand, my grandchildren. After the story aired, many took to social media asking how they could help. We reached out to several nonprofits who told us it would be difficult to collect goods for one individual. So we took matters into our own hands. On Friday, with the help of her union, we were able to reunite Thank with Herminia so outside the station for a supply drop-off that was organized within 48 hours. <laughs> Hopefully you Thank, you. Thank you so much. I just hope that if I was ever in that position, that the community would come forward and help as well. Herminia told us she felt ashamed to accept donations, but with her children also out of work and two grandchildren in need of diapers, she agreed to come. Here, I know you had a job, <laughs> but guess what, the job's all dried up. Mothers offered words of support. You know, Herminia mostly listened, too overwhelmed with emotion. We're all here for the family, and you know, I understand where you're coming from. But words were not needed. In the eyes, there was an understanding that, like Herminia, they would do whatever it took to feed their family. And I know how important it was for you to feed your family and go out so early. With enough supplies to last a month, there was one thing Herminia had to promise. Are you going to go to another food distribution right now? No, no, I'm good. I'm good all this. Thank you. I'm good. I'm so happy. I'm happy. Thank no more you so much. Waking up early? No more. <laughs> no wake up early in the morning. Eddie Dowd, KITV4, Island News. She's like, I'm good. I got them all stocked up now. Great <laughs> to see the community stepping up. And uh, thanks to Eddie for that story. And just a reminder here at KITV4, we celebrate the people of Hawaii who, without prompting, are banding together to support one another in these tough times. We'll continue to spotlight the companies, the nonprofits, and the people out there all making a positive impact with our Namea Pono campaign. You can stare, uh, share stories with us so we can feature them on air and online. Just go to KITV.com slash Namea, N-A-M-E-A, for more information. And Chaminade University held a virtual graduation ceremony earlier this week. 30 students who completed the Hogan Entrepreneurship Program got their certificates of completion online. The university's spring commencement ceremony that was supposed to happen tomorrow is rescheduled to December 14th. And Iolani School is holding graduation in person with students sitting in cars. The school's Facebook page says on June 6th, the baseball field will be transformed into a socially distanced drive-in movie type of ceremony. Attendance will be limited to only the student and immediate family. And because of the stay-at-home orders and social distancing, we can't celebrate in person the achievements of the students of 2020 who represent Hawaii's future. So we created a special page on our website, kitv.com slash class of 2020. Graduates, upload your senior selfie and let us all celebrate your success.
Yeah, big uh, congrats to them Thank for God. sure. Worked right. hard. You deserve it. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, time now, 617, and it's been a nice weekend so far weather-wise. Of course, the big question, how's it looking for Mother's Day? Mm -hmm. Allison has your forecast coming up. That's right. Plus, heroes at hard-hit New York hospital areas all given the surprise of a lifetime. Stay with us. You're watching Good Morning Hawaii. Tasia Worley, weekdays on Good Morning Hawaii in midday. Real steel. Find yours. Save $40 on any AK Series double battery bundle. Battery power made by steel. Not sold at Lowe's or the Home Depot. Always at a local steel dealer. When you have depression, it can plunge you into deep, dark lows. And can leave you feeling extremely sad and disinterested. Overwhelmed by bipolar depression? Ask about Vralar. Not all types of depression should be treated the same. Vralar effectively helps relieve all symptoms of bipolar depression with just one pill once a day. Elderly patients with dementia-related psychosis have an increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Metabolic changes may occur. Nausea, restlessness, and movement dysfunction are common side effects. When bipolar depression overwhelms, ask how Vralar can help. To every coastal window is a story of constant companions and laughter around the corner. The connections we share and cherished traditions that bring us together. See all of life's special moments through coastal windows. Locally crafted for your island home. So clear with coastal windows. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now 619 and restaurants are closed for dine-in, but plenty of residents were out shopping for food to celebrate mom at home. That's right. Time Supermarket on Baratania was busy Saturday afternoon as people picked up supplies to make that special breakfast, brunch, or dinner. While many we spoke with say they're putting aside their usual traditions of going out to eat, they say the meaning of the day hasn't changed. Well, normally I go out to dinner with my son and or done a family Mother's Day also when everyone's here. But this year, I'd like to think either he's going to cook. <laughs> we all wish our children would cook for us. With so many people planning to cook, it's no surprise that staff at the store say the most in-demand item is flour. Uh. Hmm. All right, well, uh, bringing smiles with food and flowers. The show Aloha Challenge is partnering with Watanabe Floral to make Mother's Day a little extra special for senior mothers on Oahu. Every meal the show Aloha team delivers comes with some flowers. And today, they're ready with more than 750 meals and bouquets. The show Aloha Challenge is a nonprofit established in response to the pandemic. It gives homebound seniors meals prepared by locally owned restaurants. And Hawaiian Rentals done it again with another funny sign. I like this one. <laughs> For Mother's Day, the sign asks, did the COVID stork bring you a grown baby? We know raising a husband is far more strenuous than taking care of a child. Just bring him over to HRA. We have lots of toys for him to play with. Our gift to the hardworking moms for Mother's Day. Please make sure you pack a credit card in his goodie bag. <laughs> I love it. They're, they and always have so the best true. signs over there. Yeah. Every time I drive by, it's always something. They have, they're a good sense of humor. Yeah. I always joke. I do have three children. <laughs> that includes my husband because I only have two. <laughs> Well, hopefully they're, uh, they're pampering you today. I yeah. hope so, too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to take a look at your weather as we've been wanting to know. Is it time to go outside to celebrate? Let's uh, head to Allison for the latest. Allison. 
Hey, Tom and Annalisa, and good morning, Hawaii, and happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there watching. We love you very much. We have a great news for you today. We have beautiful weather in store, special just for you. We're waking up to another, to another day of light to moderate trade winds coming in from the east northeast around 10 to 25 miles per hour. Breezy day for today. Enjoy those trade winds while they last, though, because we are expecting our winds to weaken over the coming days with higher rain chances as well. But for today, dry weather, not seeing too much in terms of rain on our Doppler radar, looking pretty quiet for Oahu right now, but we are seeing more moisture for Maui County and the Big Island, just your typical windward and Malka spots where we'll have the highest chance of rain and partly cloudy skies there as well with warmer conditions and sunnier skies for those leeward spots. So again, light morning trade showers to start our day, partly cloudy with more sun for the leeward areas and breezy as well. East northeast winds coming around 10 to 25 miles per hour and your Mother's Day forecast. Happy Mother's Day again to all of our mothers. Hope you enjoy your day. Waking up to 78 degrees around 10 a.m. 84 for our high by midday at 2 and 81. Cool and comfortable for 6 o'clock. Let's check on your forecast. I'll have more on surf and what we can expect for the rest of the week later on in the show. But for right now, you're watching Good Morning Hawaii. We'll be right back. This segment of KITV4 Island News is sponsored by Gear Up Hawaii and Hawaii P20. Right now, while you're home, applying for college could be a smart choice. To help pay for it, there's the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA. Regardless of family income, you should fill out the FAFSA. Last year, millions of dollars in financial aid went unclaimed in Hawaii. Email fafsa at hawaii.edu for help. A local specialist will respond within 24 hours. In these unprecedented times, college can open doors to new opportunities, and we're here to help. We're here for you, and we're open. I'm original, one of a kind, you feel me? Love ya. You look cute. Better than you. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. We're eating and drinking foods and beverages that are very acidic. It can soften the enamel. pro -enamel repair, what it's doing is driving more minerals deep into the enamel surface that's going to help actively repair. pro -enamel is taking it to another level. From the smallest cottage to the largest house on the block, Wisteria Lane has something for everyone. Transform your home with one of our wide selection of flooring, a luxurious look for the everyday homeowner, and with an unbeatable pricing. Visit Wisteria Lane today. University of Hawaii Community Colleges. Enroll now. We're here for you, and we're open. My new bite-sized crispy popcorn chicken is so irresistible, you'll want them whenever, so don't resist. Pop them while you game, hang, or do your thing. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. This is Good Morning Hawaii. All right, welcome back. Your time now, 625, and thousands of frontline workers are getting the recognition they deserve for their heroism during this pandemic. Yeah, as Gio Benitez reports, two major companies have teamed up to give some of them much-needed relief. It was known as the epicenter, New York's Elmhurst Hospital, once treating the most coronavirus patients in the country. But Friday, a celebration. <laughs> Here's how it started. These medical workers thought they were going to their weekly staff meeting, but on the screen, not their bosses, but the presidents of American Airlines and Hyatt. The caring with every patient, the compassion is just so inspiring. The entire Elmer family demonstrated uh, so much care for so many people that it's our turn to care for you. And to this audience, a much needed message. What could be better than a free vacation? And it's not just the workers in this room getting a vacation, it's every worker at the hospital, more than 4,000 people, getting round-trip flights and a three-night stay. They get to choose the destination. We got a vacation, a free vacation. It's just, just it's beyond deeply meaningful to me. Um, a, we haven't had any time off in a very, very long time. Everybody cannot be more thankful 
it's just quite an amazing, beyond, beyond amazing thing that they've done for us. So while they don't quite know when they're going, a bit of hope on the horizon for these real life heroes. At Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. If anyone deserves a vacation, they do, for Definitely. sure. All right, well, uh, it's 627 right now. Your top morning headlines coming up. We'll be right back. KITV4 Island News, sponsored by Bank of Hawaii. Works brings you corrosion resistant maintenance free aluminum products directly from Japan. We have carports and patio covers to protect from the sun and rain, and gates and fences that will give your home a gorgeous look and keep you safe. All materials are meticulously engineered and fabricated in Japan. For a free estimate, give us a call at 808 955 8211. And don't forget to check out our website at kunkelworks.com. I'm Joanne Jenkins with AARP. The coronavirus continues to affect us all, and we are here actively supporting you and your community. Every day, we're providing trusted information from top health experts, sharing tools to help protect families from fraud, and creating resources to support family caregivers everywhere. As always, you can count on AARP to advocate for you and your family. Join us and stay connected at aarp.org slash coronavirus. From KITV4 Island News, this is Good Morning Hawaii. Right now in Good Morning Hawaii, a top health official forced to quarantine after COVID-19 exposure at the White House. Plus, the city at the epicenter of the coronavirus crisis reports its first new case in more than a month. And as other nations track the virus with 21st century technology, Japan is criticized for a slow and outdated response. Welcome back. Time now, 6.30. We begin this half hour in Washington, where Dr. Anthony Fauci is the latest member of the COVID-19 task force to modify his routine after being exposed to someone with the coronavirus. Yeah, Karina Mitchell has the details. As frustrations and fears continue to grow over the coronavirus pandemic, news out of the White House. The director of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redfield, will self-quarantine for the next two weeks after having low exposure to a person at the White House who tested positive for COVID-19. Officials say he has no symptoms, is feeling fine, and will be working from home. ABC News has also learned that Coronavirus Task Force member Dr. Anthony Fauci will go into a modified quarantine after he came into contact with a White House staffer who is now positive with COVID-19. Officials confirming increased efforts to disinfect common areas in the West Wing. Staffers now wearing masks around the grounds. However, just days after President Trump's personal valet tested positive for COVID-19, the president is seen meeting with military leaders in the cabinet room. No one is wearing a mask. The vice president's press secretary, Katie Miller, also testing positive. Miller is also the wife of senior White House advisor Stephen Miller. 
Meanwhile, in all but three states, business restrictions are easing this Sunday. But in New York State, where residents remain under strict stay-at-home orders, disturbing medical news. Although rare, more young children who tested positive for COVID-19 or have the antibodies now have symptoms similar to toxic shock syndrome or Kawasaki's disease. 73 cases in the state, three children have died. This is the last thing that we need at this time for parents to have to worry about whether or not their youngster was infected. The CDC has asked the New York Health Department to draw up guidelines for the rest of the country on how to tackle this new serious complication. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And new research shows many American children are not getting their vaccinations because of the pandemic. On Friday, the American Academy of Pediatricians published new recommendations to keep kids safe during the pandemic, which asks pediatricians to redouble efforts to make sure children get their vaccines. They're also asked to set up different clinic hours to separate well children from the sick to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Well, the Food and Drug Administration is granting emergency authorization for a new coronavirus test. The FDA says it allow the Quidel Corporation to produce antigen tests for COVID-19. The test looks for pieces of the virus, unlike the current test that search for its genetic material. Right now, the FDA is limiting the antigen test to authorize labs and centers, but they hope that method will help diagnose more people with COVID-19. Time now, 6.33 a.m. For many Americans, the current pandemic echoes a similarity to the early AIDS crisis. But are those with HIV more at risk of getting the coronavirus? Alex Presha explains. If you are one of the 1.1 million Americans living with HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, you may have concerns about your risk of getting infected with the virus that causes COVID-19. Currently, the CDC has no specific information about the risk of COVID-19 in people with HIV. But it is known that HIV can weaken the immune system, making it harder to fight off infections and diseases. The CDC says risk for people with HIV getting sick is greatest in people with a low CD4 cell count, those who are not receiving HIV treatment, and older adults. However, you can help prevent sickness and manage your health even in these uncertain times. Experts at the Mayo Clinic recommend establishing a clinical care plan with your health care provider. This may include starting antiretroviral therapy if you haven't already and checking that your vaccines are up to date. Make sure you have at least a 30-day supply of your HIV medicine and other medications or supplies you usually need. This is especially important for those with underlying conditions. And above all, remember to stay connected. This pandemic can bring up negative memories for many living with HIV call or video chat with loved ones and participate in activities you enjoy. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Perche, ABC News. All right, well, happening today, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson expected to ease lockdown restrictions and announce a new five-tier COVID-19 warning system. Now, during his televised address, Johnson is expected to say that the country is close to moving from, from a, a threat level four out of five back down to a level three. He's also expected to encourage workers unable to work from home to return to their workplaces while still practicing social distancing. Well, meanwhile, Brazil is maintaining its reputation as a hotspot of COVID-19 in Latin America with 10,000 confirmed deaths. It also leads Latin America in confirmed cases of the virus with more than 155,000 as of Saturday. Now, this comes as the country's president continues to disregard social distancing regulations, attending large rallies, and even suggesting that he would host a large bar barbecue party, regardless of COVID-19 restrictions. Well, new this morning, China has reported its first new case of coronavirus since April 3rd. The patient is currently in critical condition at a hospital in Wuhan. Of course, that's where this all uh, began. Um, his wife also tested positive and was re reported as an asymptomatic case. The Wuhan Health Commission says the cause of the patient's infection is past community infection and that he lives in a neighborhood that has, 20, uh, has recorded 20 confirmed cases overall. Well, time now, 6.36 a.m. Japan has been criticized for its slow and inefficient response to the coronavirus pandemic. But as Will Ripley reports, in a society still very much reliant on fax machines, switching from paper to pixel may be a challenge. As other nations track coronavirus with 21st century tech, 
Japan relies on a relic that peaked in the 1980s. We have to fill out paper documents by hand and send them in by fax, says Dr. Kyuto Tanaka. Our system hasn't changed for decades. Tanaka's Twitter tirade about his pile of coronavirus paperwork quickly went, well, viral, getting the attention of Japanese lawmakers like Masaaki Taida, a deputy minister in charge of IT policy. You are an IT guy. Is it frustrating for you that this country still clings to, you know, baby boomer era technology? Yes, I'm frustrated, he says. I think the government's handling of the coronavirus pandemic exposed the problem of digitalization in Japan. Not just the government. Most Japanese companies still rely on fax machines. Documents have to be hand-stamped with traditional hunko seals. Outdated business practices make working from home nearly impossible for most Japanese. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been trying to make the system more efficient. A challenge, says Japan economist Jesper Cole. Coronanomics is doing what Abenomics couldn't achieve, which is fundamentally change Japanese behavior. The reality is that the fax machine was a brilliant technology in the early 1980s, but you know, now it's the equivalent of the steam engine. And this is Japan. They invented the bullet train. Nearly everyone has a smart toilet, not to mention all the robots. When I lived here, there was this joke that like Japan is going to invent a robot to carry your facts to you. Right, right, right. Why are they still using them? Look, I mean, Japanese salarymen are incredibly resistant to change. And it's about time that they start to embrace digital culture as passionately as Japanese teenagers. He says the pandemic may be changing deeply in entrenched, rigid behavior, finally bringing futuristic Japan into the 21st century. Interesting story there, and that was uh, Will Ripley reporting. In other news, Facebook says it'll let employees work from home for the rest of the year. So get those uh, sweatpants ready, yeah. <laughs> the tech giant also says uh, it will not open most of the offices until July at the earliest. In March, Facebook voluntarily asked workers to telecommute to protect them from coronavirus. Yeah, joining a lot of companies and doing that. I know a lot of us are also working from home. Yeah, so. definitely, it definitely has the perks with it, too, you mm -hmm. know. Well, time now is 6.39 a.m. Many restaurants and bars in Hawaii are paying their workers through federal Paycheck Protection Program loans. Yeah, that's that PPP that we keep hearing a lot about. And coming up, we'll hear from two small business owners who say that money isn't enough to sustain them until they can reopen. Time now, 6.39. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back on your Sunday. Stay with us. Paul Drews, News and Weather, weekends on KITV4 Island News. For 100 years, our job has been getting you from point A to point B. As the world faces a new challenge, we're continuing to move because what moves us is doing the right thing. We know these are difficult times, and our focus is on providing and maintaining reliable vehicles for our community. If you need servicing or repairs to get where you need to go, we are here for you. We're here for you, and we're open. I'm original, one of a kind, you feel me? Ooh. Love ya. Boop. You look cute. Better than you. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. You type it in the coordinates? No, I'm paying my brother back before we get going. He scored me a Billy Big Mouth Pass. The thing in Wallfish. For the man cave. I love those things. Take me to the river. Drive me in the water. Secure Mobile Banking from Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission. Rick Bartolini of Rick Bartolini Presents, producing shows for Mariah Carey, Lionel Richie, Earth, Wind & Fire, and Bill Maher, is offering his chic penthouse for sale at the Elite Symphony. This mid-conditioned condo features breathtaking ocean vistas from every room. The spacious kitchen and baths are brimming with stylish features. Luxury upgrades and built-ins abound. Bartolini will include two front row tickets to every RBP event in Honolulu over the next five years. Douglas Shanefield and Adrian Yee have all the details. We're here for you, and we're open.
My new bite-sized crispy popcorn chicken is so irresistible, you'll want them whenever, so don't resist. Pop them while you game, hang, or do your thing. Pop my 100% all-white meat classic or spicy popcorn chicken combo, only a Jack in the Box. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 6.41 a.m. Sobering new numbers show an increase in unemployment that hasn't been seen since the Great Depression. Yeah, but as uh, Deirdre Bolton reports, workers who have been laid off are hopeful that they'll be back to work soon. This morning, demand at food banks across the country remains high. Somebody to care about us. Somebody trying to help us and get, get us through this crisis. And I'll be glad when it's over with. Staggering unemployment numbers show that more than 20 million Americans lost their jobs last month. The unemployment rate at its highest since the Great Depression. More than a third of the jobs lost were in leisure and hospitality. And for many out of work Americans, applying for unemployment benefits has become a full time job. In Louisiana, Ed and Melissa Hamlet are struggling. It's like we're beating our head against a brick wall. You're getting the same answer every day. I would say probably 95% of the time you're calling and you're not getting to speak with anyone at all. Nearly 80% of people currently unemployed believe their situations are temporary and expect to return to their jobs after businesses reopen. Vulcan Balmas owns a barber shop in South Florida. He's been closed down since the beginning of April, but he says he expects to hire back six employees when he reopens. We're taking all the sanitary precautions and make sure the social distancing, wearing masks, sanitizing, and be able to, you know, make some money that so we can pay our bills. Americans are managing hard times and still finding ways to contribute to their communities. Tony Lupo used money from his stimulus check to purchase gift certificates from local businesses, which he then donated to health care workers in his town upstate New York. I wasn't financially impacted by what's going on, and, uh, my heart bled for the restaurants and stuff that are, you know, aren't able to conduct business freely. I heard that the nurses from our local hospital were going to New York City to help out. And I thought if I did that, that would help both. Are helping and so are companies. Nike, Puma, UGG, just three that have donated free gear to healthcare workers. I'm Deirdre Bolton, ABC News, New York. And here at home, the Conco Mission of Hawaii will give out more than 500 free masks and toilet paper rolls to Oahu's homeless shelters and nonprofits starting Monday. Pickup starts at noon at 1728 Liliha Street in Kalihi. Items will be delivered to the Waipahu Aloha Club and the Institute of Human Services later in the week. All right, well, dozens lined up at the Hawaii Cedar Church in Kalihi for free testing. It was open to anyone with insurance, even if they didn't have symptoms. Now, that's a big deal because that's changed from before. Usually, you had to have some specific symptoms in order to qualify because that's when we had a more limited supply of tests. Well, now, they want to make sure the criteria gets expanded. Organizers say they saw a lot of seniors without symptoms taking advantage. I had a lady that came to our testing site, and I'm following through on that. She said, I'm 70 years old. You will give me that test. And I said, yes, ma'am. You know, we talk about protecting the kupunas. Why should we decide that, take that test away from them? Uh, we should give it to them based on age alone. I, I honestly believe that. Yeah, now the group says in addition to the elderly, asymptomatic testing also helps those with mental illness and anxiety who just want to put their minds at ease by getting that test. Mm -hmm. So important, especially with uh, the economy reopening, tourists mm -hmm. starting to come back. I know we were talking about Lieutenant Governor Josh Green saying having testing right. for all arrivals. Right. So it's just the backbone of opening our economy. Absolutely. All right, well. Another draw for, yeah, the, <laughs> for the economy and for Hawaii, of course, is our weather, and it's Mother's Day. So yeah. let's ask Allison what the uh, weather is looking like. How's it, Allison? And now for another check on our weekend forecast. Right now it's 72 degrees here in Honolulu. Cool to start our morning with light winds as well coming in from the northeast around six miles per hour. Now we have light winds for this morning, but we are expecting our trade winds to reach around 10 to 25 miles per hour coming in from the east northeast for today. But again, enjoy that breeze while it lasts because we are expecting lighter winds over the coming days as the surface trough rolls in, weakens that ridge of high pressure that fuels our trades to give us a higher chance of rain. 
and lighter winds for our work week. But as we go island by island, Kauai County, partly cloudy skies here with a few morning trade showers. We're expecting some light passing rains for your typical windward and Malka spots with sunnier skies for leeward areas. Kahului reaching 83 degrees for today. East northeast winds 10 to 25 miles per hour, so that breeze will keep things nice and comfortable. Partly cloudy near Gila with more sunshine for Kona and clouds there. Southwest winds for leeward ends 10 to 10 to 15 miles per hour for the Big Island. Now here's a check on our surf. Our winds may be up, but our surf is down. We have a fading no north swell with five to seven footers there. Still at three to five for the south, two to four for the west and one to three for the east. Now we are expecting a moderate swell to roll in for our southwest facing shores by our midweek Wednesday into Thursday. And our high tide is this evening at seven o'clock at just over two feet. Now here's a check on your extended forecast. We have our highs in the mid 80s all week long and lows in the upper 60s to the lower 70s. Plenty of sunshine and dry conditions for our Mother's Day. But come Monday, we are expecting a little bit higher rain chances for Monday and Tuesday as our winds begin to weaken, dropping down to around five miles per hour by Wednesday. That's a check on your weekend forecast. Annalisa, I'll send it back to you. Right now we're focusing on reopening the economy but how is that going to be laid out so i want to introduce our people today michael miller he's the co-owner of tiki's you might recognize that very popular hot spot in waikiki and we also have justin yoshino he is the owner of market advantage which specializes in marketing for the restaurant bar and tourism businesses let's start with you michael tell us about your personal experience at tiki's um you did get a ppp loan how is this uh, going to work for you? Yeah, we're, we've been affected. Uh, we did take the PPP um, loan and uh, we brought our staff back to work, but not physically back to work in the restaurant. So we did a lump sum payout of all of their uh, paid time off. And, and that's what that loan allowed us to do because we had no cash flow. Uh, we, we couldn't do anything. So we're using it that way. So we paid everyone's paid time off out to give them a a biggest check as possible. And then we uh, brought them back um, following all the, the guidelines so that it can be forgivable. But the challenge for us and other restaurants and other businesses, especially here in Hawaii, is that we are not open for business. Go ahead, Justin. My problem is gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing back my employees and it has to end by the end of June, but there isn't much work for us to do because everything hasn't opened up. So. You know, we can start to do planning. We can do a lot of um, house cleaning and put together some of our new projects. But the actual work it is is not going to really make sense for us unless it's extended, because uh, you know all the restaurants, bars, and hotels which we work close very closely with through all of our um, you know all the people that we we uh, we do the promotions for. We can't take and actually implement anything because nothing is open. And the big part of it, obviously, is um, we're so tourism driven and we're so reliant on outsiders coming in and spending all of their money on vacations and at all of our establishments. Um, that also raises a flag for uh, our economy, doesn't it? I wanted uh, at least Michael and Justin to weigh in on the legislative part of this and, and how our diversification can go forward. So, first of all, I, I want to thank the Hawaii Restaurant Association, Cheryl, uh, our executive director, Matsuoka, as well as uh, Tom Jones and the entire, uh, all the volunteers of the different committees that have met with the governor, uh, spoken to different legislative people at all levels um, that are really trying hard to make, um, to share the message of what's going on and, and give our perspective. So, they, they've been all been working hard. You know, I think economic diversity is great. Um, and, but I also think we have to be, people have been talking about that for generations of that here in Hawaii. And um, there's been some initiatives um, uh, that haven't really always taken off. Um, so I think this might be the push to get that going, but the truth is uh, the tax monies that would be needed 
to get diversification going aren't going to exist without tourism. So I think we, you know, we do do tourism well, and we should be able to do tourism safe. And I think it's a good resetting point for tourism in Hawaii. But um, yeah, I don't know how much economic diversification we can do in, in the short time. We're going to have a lot of people um, still on unemployment if, if that's the case. And Justin, did you want to weigh in too? Yeah, I also share uh, Michael's sentiment in that, uh, you know, because we're already a tourist-based uh, economy, we need to revive the tourism. And without doing that, having the tourists come over, we're, we're never going to recover and we won't be able to support these other initiatives moving forward. So I think the first line of duty, like a, as a small business person, my company does marketing for all the, the liquor companies, such as Pernod Ricard, Constellation Wines, Jackson Family Wines, and I work with Budweiser. We, without them uh, giving us the support money to pr help promote the restaurants and bars, and the restaurants and bars aren't open, so we there's not no work for us to do. It's a trickle down effect, and, and with all these tourists coming in, everybody's affected. So what I wanted to ask is, of that 1.25 billion dollars that the state received, by the way, every every state received that money, and if it's used, and I can quote Governor Ige here, who said that the state's share was sorely needed because of the dire financial consequences. Of of halting its tourism industry as a virus spread. So we need to take those funds and the first thing we need to fix is to get our tourists back to Hawaii. And how do we do that? There has to be testing before they come in, when they get here, and and also if there's if, if there's a if there's a way to figure out if, if they get sick while they're here, what are we gonna do? If we don't fix that, this problem is gonna exist for a long time. There's gonna be thousands of businesses that are going to close if we don't open up tourism in a safe manner and we act now to plan ahead. Uh, I've spoken with one of the, uh, the directors at Hawaiian Air, so I know that the, the airport is working through these prop, uh, the progression of bringing the tourists back in by having those scanners that, you know, that take your temperature as you walk through, as they have in, in some of the, uh, in, in Japan and some of the other countries have already instituted. So the planning has to really start now. We really need to start this ball rolling and get get answers and get uh, proposals and and putting these uh, programs into action. Because at the end of the day, we can talk about this forever, but if we don't bring the tourists back to Hawaii, we're never gonna we're, we're, we're never gonna get back to our you know our daily lives and be able to support all of the businesses in Hawaii. So that, that should be first and foremost, uh, you know, the safety, of course, but also the next step is to getting these restaurants, hotels and resorts and getting people to fly to Hawaii. And that, that should be our main focus of the second phase, which should be starting now. So I would like to see a big chunk of that $1.25 million put into testing, put into uh, our industry and help us revive it. Well, thanks again for joining us today. That was Michael Miller of Tiki's Grill and Bar and Justin Yoshino of Market Advantage. Thanks for joining us. And don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back. Start your morning with KITV4's Tom George. Weekends on Good Morning Hawaii. Being diagnosed with any type of lung cancer or mesothelioma caused by asbestos is a devastating thing. That's where the Hawaii Personal Injury Law Firm of Gallagher, Day, Robertus, and Waxman can help. We have been the only law firm in Hawaii for the past 40 years representing asbestos and mesothelioma patients. All of the lawyers in this firm and all of the staff are Hawaii residents. If you live in Hawaii, were exposed to asbestos in Hawaii, and have been diagnosed with any type of lung cancer or mesothelioma, contact Gallagher, Day, Robertus, and Waxman today. Sanitize is what you do, so no give virus to our two tools. Clean doorknobs, switches, cell phones too, and use that tissue when you have to. Six foot space from me to you. Hey, wash your hands for 20 seconds, boo. 20 seconds, boo. Shaka to greet you and you. Just say no to lay poo poo. No that face, cause it's taboo. Keep Hawaii healthy, cause that's what we do. Getting our daily essentials can be difficult. 
getting access to your money shouldn't. Here for all your money needs. For life. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. You are on top of your game. Your shower, five minutes shorter than usual. A feat built on speed, grace, and exfoliation. Today, a personal record. Tomorrow, the world. Bask in the glory of energy efficiency, cleanliness conqueror. You are an energy champion. Go forth and... What are you doing? <sighs> well, uh, why? Why? What are you doing? Be an energy champion. Learn how at hawaiienergy.com slash champion. Start your morning with KITV4's Annalisa Burgos. Weekends on Good Morning Hawaii. Davey D. Good Morning Hawaii traffic reports on Good Morning Hawaii. This is Good Morning Hawaii. Welcome back. Time now, 6.56, and this Mother's Day, we're paying tribute to the moms on the front lines of the coronavirus crisis. Definitely appreciate them. That's right. It happens to be National Nurses Week as well. Marcy Gonzalez reports that their strength and courage is going beyond what was ever expected of them and setting an example for all of us. They are heroes on the front lines of this pandemic and in the eyes of those who give them their most treasured title, mom. <laughs> Nurses like Lindsay Burrell holding dying patients' hands, but unable to hug their children at the end of grueling days. I can't touch her, remember? Okay, but I can't get close to you. Let me go change, okay? I missed you boys so much. I love you. Other healthcare workers like...